Hey guys, really quickly, I'm going to show you how to use the color history, the color swatches, and the color library inside of Paintstorm to not only keep track of your colors, but store them and export them if you find a group of colors or tones that you really like. So the first thing we're going to do is enable color history in our color wheel. Some people don't like this. I didn't like it at first, but now that I've used it for a while, I find it very useful for you know, not losing colors, because I really like to color pick a lot, and um, sometimes I do it on accident, and I can't get back the color that I just had. So up here in the top right, we have a gear icon, and we'll click on it and select Show Recent Colors, and instantly it makes a new tiled row of our color history, and every time we sample, it updates. Cool, so there's one way to keep track of our colors. Next, we're going to move on to the color swatches that we can show by selecting View, Color Swatches. So this is kind of a quick and dirty way to store colors. There are also some extra little bonus things like gradient mapping and auto generation in this panel, um, which you can play with, but it'll work the same way. So you'll notice that there's no way to input colors. We can select our colors, but we can't input it. There's no new color from select color, and we can't use the paint bucket tool. Hmm. So what do we do? Well, first what we do is we select the color we want to add to our swatch. So let's select this orange. Then we'll come over here and we'll hold down control and then left click and it will fill that tile with our color. Cool. So we can go through and select whatever colors we want and add them there. Now, obviously you can see that this isn't a great way because we can't export our colors, but it's kind of a quick and dirty palette um, for referencing colors. And I use this occasionally when I'm experimenting or screwing around. Um, I did use it when I was doing value studies and I predefined my values and I put them all in there in a row and then we just click back and forth between them. That worked, we'll continue on. Um, but really quickly, these folders, these create gradients based on whatever colors you put in one of the four corners. So in order to do this, let's select this pink color and we'll hold down control and then click in the top left corner. And then you can see it begins to make a gradient with whatever colors or hues or tones we put in there. So this is kind of cool. You can screw around with it. It's fun for finding colors if you're having a hard time. It's pretty useful actually. I use this much more than I use the swatches. Because what I do if I want to save colors is use the color library because that's what it's designed for. Who would have thought? So we'll come up here to view and select color library and bah, color library. Cool. So at the top we can see our color history, which is convenient, and some predefined folders with colors in it from Paintstorm. I don't find these particularly useful, um, but it does give you a good show of what you can do with it. So the first thing we're going to touch on really quick before we go any further is appearance. If we click this little kind of dot and line icon in the bottom right, it'll change it from list view, like this, to pure tile view. I prefer to keep it on list view because you can name your colors, which is super convenient. You can also export whatever colors you create in this library by clicking the gear icon and selecting save. Cool. All right. So let's make a new folder. So we'll select the top folder and click the new folder icon and we'll create a new folder on top of our other folder. And we'll double click on it to rename it and we'll call this custom01 and hit enter. Next, let's select a color and select new color from current color. And we'll click it and we'll go, wait, that's a green, not, not my orange. I haven't selected a green in forever. What's going on? So you think maybe it was a, a fluke and I'll click it again and no, that's not right either. What's going on here? So as far as I can tell, for some reason it selects a random color to put in there. If we click it a couple more times, you can see it just throws random colors from, I think, possibly our color history. Maybe it kind of seems like it could be. I'm not entirely certain. So what we can do is just select our color and click this little eyedropper icon and overrides the color. <clears throat> or hearkening back to the swatches method, you can hold down control and click. Now we can rename these colors, whatever we want by double clicking and going, this is a color. Cool, can rename the folders, can rename these. 
you cannot move the folders after they've been created, but you can move the colors up and down. So <clears throat> kind of convenient, kind of not. I don't know why it's, oh, you can move the folders. Look at that, I stand corrected. You can click and drag the folders around. Never mind. ignore that last section. Um, look at me learning new things every day. Okay, so that's how you create them. You can save them out by selecting save. You can save your entire color library out. This might be useful if you're doing a lot of pieces that have to have the same kind of feeling or the same color palette, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's kind of cool. Screw around with it. I think it's very useful. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep going through all these different panels and uploading how to use them and interact with them. And if you know why it creates a random color, let me know down below because I can't figure it out and it doesn't bother me that much because I usually just create a bunch of them and then as I find colors I like, I override and continue on my way. So, yep. Anyway, until next time, hopefully this is under 10 minutes and uh, I'll see you guys later. Hey, thanks for watching to the end of the video. I think I managed to keep it under 10 minutes. I don't know, I haven't edited this yet. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with me and see what I'm doing, follow me on Instagram down below or in the video here um, or any other social media. So yeah. Next up is probably a speed painting, so stay tuned.